All right, welcome to the fourth part in our Firestore and Firebase tutorial series. This one's gonna be on real-time updates. Uh, so by real-time, we mean stream subscriptions and whenever that document changes, you're gonna see that data piped to your app immediately and you're not gonna to have to refresh. Um, so it's gonna be live updates. So this is how we're gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna make some new event classes for our block. Then we're going to show how I'm gonna manage those subscriptions in the block state. And then we're going to um, look at the Firebase API and see how we're gonna to subscribe to a document reference. Uh, then we're gonna unsubscribe and close the subscriptions and then look at the new UI, which is over here. So this is a user profile um, and just see how we're gonna use the block in the new events there. Uh, so the new UI just has their data here so we can see that it's going to live update. And I have their document open right here in the console. And we can see that if I change something in here, it almost instantly gets piped to the app. It's actually quite amazing how fast it actually is. So it's right there. So it took less than a second. I wanna say it was about a third of a second. So it's very, very impressive stuff. And it's also really quite easy to use. Uh, the hardest part is probably managing the subscriptions. Um, so first, let's look at the new event classes. So our block from the previous tutorials already has a bunch of events for querying and loading. So we got three new events here. Uh, one of them is going to be to start the subscription and then one of them is going to be to stop. And then one of them is just to show that a user has been updated with a new document. And I'll show you why we need this particular event later uh, when we look into the event handling. Um, so just as a design decision, I've made it so that you can only subscribe to one user at a time and then unsubscribe for them. You could in theory subscribe to an entire uh, query that rhymed, but uh, you can subscribe to a query and get the results of that live updating as well. We're not gonna do that, uh, but you can. So just be aware that that's, that's potential out there. And if your documents change and the results of the query changes, then things will be popped in and out of the list as well. So that's a pretty powerful feature, but not gonna use it. We're just gonna subscribe to one document today. Uh, so in those three events, uh, let's look at the, uh, the user state now and see what I've added to it. So the new thing that I've added is this map with this really, really long type here. Uh, but it's going to be a map of string, which is the ID for the user, and then a stream subscription. So this is where we're going to keep all of her subscriptions so, so that we can manage them and close them when we're done with them. Uh, we really don't want to have stream subscriptions kicking around indefinitely. If you get too many of them, you can get some performance issues, but it's also quite expire, expensive in Firebase. They do charge you for having open subscriptions. And then every single time a document changes, you're going to get charged for a read as well. Uh, so you do want to use these... I don't want to say sparingly, but you don't really want to just subscribe to literally every document that your app has. So this screen live updates, and we see this has two E's. And if we go backwards, this user has two E's here as well. So there is only one source of truth for that, uh, but this screen does not live update, but the profile does. So when you enter the profile, uh, there's going to be live updates. When you exit, there's not. It's going to be closed. Um, so yeah, this is a stream subscription and what we're piping out is the document snapshot, which has that type of our user model. Um, yeah, so then just adding that into the boilerplate that we already have. So we got to put it in the constructor. We got to put an empty map in our initial state. And then we got to add a nullable version of that with the question mark to our copy with so that we can update that. And then um, add it to all of the equality. I actually missed it in hash values. Looks like so I'll put it there now. But yeah, putting that into our equality with the map equals and the hash values. Okay, so now that we've seen the events in the state, let's see the uh, block here and how we're gonna handle these events. So here's our users block. And remember that all of our event handling is in different files. So we just need to register these three new events right here and call the handlers that I've written. Uh, so subscribe, unsubscribe, and just when a user is updated. So let's look at users subscribe first. So this is to start it. So in subscribe to user, it takes in these five inputs. It takes the new event class, the existing state, the emitter, the repository. And in this case, oh, actually, we don't need the repository here, do we? Let's get rid of that. It was unused. Uh, but anyways, what we're going to do is just assert that we actually have a document. Because what we're going to need is a document reference to actually listen to. So we're gonna to have to already have this user in our state. 
Uh, you don't need to necessarily do it this way, but it's just a restriction that I've put on, on my app here. Um, so there's just an assert statement. Um, and then if we're already listening to it, I'm just gonna put a debug print and basically debounce this and return because we don't wanna listen to the same document more than once. And then this is where we're gonna get our stream. So we look up that user document and we know that this key exists because we've asserted up here. And then we just go dot reference, which uh, is on a document snapshot. And this has the method snapshots. And snapshots will return us a stream. And it's a stream of document snapshots. So whenever that document gets updated in any way, whether it's edited by an app or you manually edit it in the console or it's deleted or anything, uh, you're going to get something piped up to the stream. And with this stream, we can listen to that. And then on each change to the document, we're gonna update the map of known users. Uh, so remember the, the map of users, which is a map of ID and then that document snapshot is our source of truth for users, right? So we don't want to have different screens having different document snapshots for the same user. We want one single source of truth for those users and that is in the user state in that map. Uh, so what we gotta do is just listen to that stream, right? So we go stream.listen and that's gonna have a document. And then all we gotta do is pipe that event off to our block and um, make a user's updated event. So we can't actually emit from this kind of callback. Uh, the emitter doesn't work when it's in these like async um, callbacks in a stream listener. I'm not exactly sure why, but I needed to make this other event. Uh, it was just throwing. But yeah, it's not a big deal. We just make a new event and then we just got to update our state there. So then in addition to that, we're gonna get our existing subscriptions and then copy that map. And then we're just going to register that new subscription, right? Because stream.listen returns us a stream subscription. And then we got to put it in our state so that we keep track of it because we do need to cancel these when we're done with them. And then we just emit that new state, state.copy with and update our subscriptions here in this map. So let's now take a look at this on user updated event, which is a very simple event. So we're gonna go on user updated. And you know what, this one probably doesn't need the repository either. So let's get rid of that. Sorry about that. But anyways, uh, it's just a really super simple event handler. So it's just takes in a document snapshot from the event. And then we copy our existing users that we know about we assign that into its place into the map by ID, and then we admit that we have that new uh, map of documents. So whenever a document is changing uh, and we're subscribed to it, what's gonna happen is ultimately this map at the key where that document lives is gonna get updated. And this document at that key is always gonna be the source of truth no matter how it gets updated, whether it's in a stream subscription or we reload the list or whatever we do. Okay, so now let's just take a look at the unsubscribing to a user. So very similar, uh, we're gonna take that new event class and that's got an ID for the user ID, which is the same as our document ID. We got the user state and the emitter. And then we're just going to make sure that that stream was actually registered. If it didn't get registered, uh, I was thinking about throwing an exception here because that's a bit weird. Why are you trying to cancel a stream if it doesn't exist? Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna do a debug print and return. So this is a bit like a debounce as well. Uh, but assuming it does live in here, what we're going to do is get that existing list of subscriptions. We're just going to remove it from our map. And remove not only removes it from the map, it also returns you the value that you removed. So that is over here. And then we just got to cancel that stream and emit our new subscriptions map. So yeah, um, not too, too complicated, but there is some async work here and we really got to make sure that we never lose a reference to a stream subscription and let it listen forever. Um, so that's all the, the uh, first four points here. So now let's take a look at the new UI, which is this profile screen, and then how we're going to just dispatch those events and just display the data. So here's the user profile screen and we're going to get here via the user list tile that already existed. So let's look at that in components. So user list tile, it used to have a to do here and it said, you know, go to the user's specific profile and now that exists. So that's here, it just pushes this route and that brings us to this screen here. Uh, so this one is stateful and I made it stateful so that we can add some events in init state and dispose. 
Um, so it just takes the ID of the user profile. It doesn't take the actual entire user, even though we know about that, because we want the source of truth for the user to come from the block. We don't want to pass in a user model here, even though we have one from the list out, because this is going to be final and it's never going to change. Uh, we want it to change and we want it to live update. Sorry, the ID is not going to change, obviously, but the, the user model will. Okay, so first off, we just got to find our user's block. Um, and we need to save a reference to it because you can't add events in Dispose uh, if you're looking it up via context. So in an init state, I've just got a debug print here to get the ID because it's kind of annoying to find my users in Firestore. So that's just for me to help find the document in the console. And then we add this event here, user subscribe event, and we, all it takes in is the user ID. And then similarly in Dispose, we just unsubscribe. Right, so as a design decision, I just decided that the list does not live update, but the profile does. So we're gonna stop that subscription uh, once we leave this screen here. Okay, so we just got a helper method here to build out a little string to comma join the languages. So this user just has English there. And then we're gonna use a block builder. And just like um, in the list tile where we're mapping all of the users to list tiles, now we're just gonna look at a single singular user. And here's a to-do, and it's an interesting thought. So normally we get here via that list tile, right? So if you click on this list tile, we know for sure that this user exists, and then we get to here, this exclamation mark where we're ensuring that this user exists in the map, that's not gonna crash, because we know that, right? But imagine that we got to this screen from a different way, like a deep link or something like that. Potentially you could have a deep link that takes you to this screen from like a notification before your app is really fully ready. Uh, you might want a system that makes sure it's ready before you enter this screen. Uh, but just, just as a to-do here, just to keep this in mind, uh, maybe if this user doesn't always exist and we know, know that for sure, this isn't great. We might need to have some sort of loading state where we wait for it to exist. Um, but for now, we're just assuming that it always exists and we're also assuming that the document reference always has data. So that's our user. We're looking it up by ID and we're looking it up from the state. And because Block Builder rebuilds every time that state changes, whenever we get a live update, this screen is going to rebuild and we saw that that pop in instantly when I changed the data there. Right, so then we're just building a screen. The app bar has their username. And then there's a list view. Uh, it doesn't scroll yet because there's not enough stuff. Uh, but it just displays all of the stuff that is already on their user model, which is the email address, whether or not they're verified, uh, their birthday string, now it's a formatted date, their languages, comma joined, this one just has English, and then their phone number, which is just their ID. It's not really a real phone number, obviously. So yeah, let's just look at the um, live updates again. So we go here, we change this to true. They are now email verified. We change this phone number to something. It changes instantly. Uh, but one thing that I did want to point out here is that I don't have any sort of try catch around the parsing. And I'm assuming in my data models that certain things will always exist, right? So if we look at our user model, let's look at that again. Remember that a lot of these keys, name, phone number, is email verified. These are not nullable. Right, so when I generate my to and from JSON, it's not going to do this in a way that it would ever assume it's null. So let's, instead of doing something that um, happy path, like changing the email to a valid string, let's just delete is email verified entirely, right? And what's gonna happen is it's gonna get a live update, right? And it's gonna get a live update with a document that doesn't have is email verified. And when we go forward, we're gonna see that we just get a gray screen on release mode if for debug obviously it's red and yellow uh, with an error. So this is something to keep in mind that if, if your data gets messed up, uh, your parsing might get messed up as well. So, you know, as a software developer, you're gonna have to think about what fields can and can't be null and how am I ensuring that they could never be null uh, if I really don't want them to be in a, in a thing like Firestore because Firestore will just let you do whatever you want. All right, so that's just something to keep in mind um, I'm just gonna delete this user now that it's uh, screwed up, which also causes an, an exception because we're assuming that that user always exists, right? So <laughs> that's a whole bunch of crashes. 
Uh, but it's just something to call out here that I'm not really doing that kind of error handling, like what happens if I have bad data. Uh, I don't think I'm going to either. I think we're just going to do the, leave this with the happy path. Um, but I think that leads us nicely into changing to a different Firestore system for the next, uh, not Firestore, but Firebase um, service, and that's going to be cloud storage. So I think in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is make this profile image a real image that you can take a photo with. And um, yeah, we're going to store that in Firebase cloud storage, which is a file storage, unlike this one, which is the JSON blob. These are just files. So yeah, hope you enjoyed and uh, looking forward to making this profile image work.